Right, so good morning everyone. Hopefully everyone can hear me. I can hear me, which is quite distracting. But hopefully if I can hear me, you can hear me. Um, so I'll just wait for someone to give me a heads up that they can hear me and everything's working all right, and then we'll begin. So uh, just looking in the chat, we've got about 40 people chatting. Uh, morning, Jed. Morning, Rachel. Uh, as we go, we've got David, Simon, Phil. Good morning to everyone. Uh, hopefully you can all hear me. Yep, Greg says you can hear me. Right, so let's get rid of my ugly mug and let's have a look what we're doing today. So hopefully you can still hear me. Hopefully, if not, I'm sure someone will let me know. Right, so today we'll be building a new um, small horse cart. Which looks quite looks like quite a nice little kit to be honest. I've not seen this in the flesh yet. Um, I have not had a chance to open it up and have a look at the kit, but it looks to be quite a nice one. Um, so we'll have a go at that today, and just to take a, a bit more time, have a look at something else. Um, we're doing these um, potato crates, which um, I live well not on a potato farm, but I'm surrounded by a potato farms, so I see thousands of these a day. Um, so it'll be quite nice to have a go at them. So it should be quite a short and sweet um, little bit live build today. Not much going on, just these two kits, but I've never seen this um, horse cart. Um, it looks to be a fairly detailed. Yeah, it looks to be a bit of a, not a simple four sides kit. Um, so that might take a bit longer, but we'll um, get going and have a look. Like I said, not seen it before, so. I'll be making all mistakes live. So we've got 70 odd people watching the chat now, which is great. So good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Oh, I certainly am. Right. That's what I'm out. Screw one, screw two. Okay, do. Let's have a look at quick look at the instructions then. I'll hold it up so you can see it as well. Uh, so, fairly simple kit by the looks of it. Not too bad. Right, let's have a go then. So I think looks like we need to glue this piece which has already fallen out and onto this piece. Centre piece. Someone's saying about the focus on the overhead camera. Uh, not much I can do about that unfortunately. Um I don't think it's a focus that's the issue. I think it's the um the landline, the uh, internet quality, unfortunately, I can't focus this camera, uh, which is a shame, but it's just a drawback of the software we use for streams, unfortunately. So, that's already been released for us. Let's just quickly have a go at releasing this. Just a sharp swan and mortar knife, all you need. Treating it to a new cutting hat today. And then just with a simple file, take down the burr on the side. Just to neaten everything up a bit. Not important you do this, not vital, but if you've got a bit of time, not in a rush or anything, and it's just worth taking a couple of seconds just to file things down, just to make sure everything's neat, everything's tidy, and we don't run into any issues later on. Because when, when you're building small kits like this, even the slight one millimeter burr on the edge could sort of throw things off a bit. Right, uh, so we're gluing this on top of this, I think. Drive test that, drive run. Yeah, that seems to go on nicely. So the glue I'm using, as always, is the uh, Look Materials Laser Cut Kit Glue. Brilliant stuff, this. I cannot recommend it. I can't recommend it enough. Simple as it's um, brilliant glue. That's amazing for our laser cut kits. Really do recommend it. Um, but it's also handy to have a damp paper towel in the bottom of a jar or a small glass so that when you're not using the glue, you leave it upside down like that so you don't clog the tip up. And then once you've finished, uh, just get a syringe, pop the nozzle on the end of the syringe, pump it through with water and nice and clean. And you won't ruin your tips, which is top tip from me. So let's crack on. Let's get a glue at the top. 
guess they go to the bottom, lead up each side. Hopefully, that's all we need. Now this glue, depending on the temperature, will go off quite quickly, but you do have a little bit of playtime. It's quite chilly this morning up in uh, Doncaster, so hopefully, yeah, that's gone off nicely already. And just comparing that to instructions, looks about right to me. Awesome. So it's looking in the chat. We've got Rachel, she did notice the uh, new putting mat. Yeah, I thought I'd treat you. Don't worry, I've still got the old one. If you want me to bring the old one back out, I can do, but that's a bit messy. I'll leave. Use this one for cutting, that one for painting. Uh, we've got Nick. Good morning, Dylan. Uh, good morning, Nick. Uh, beautiful day here in the Isle of Grand West. Grand Western. Never heard of that, Nick. It's a new one on me. Right, step two. Uh, release part C and D from the laser board sheets as shown. What are they? Uh, looks like the springs and the axle, is that? You're learning with me on this one, so this could get interesting. Yeah, so I think Tristan's referring to the axle, which I think is the axle, and two of these um, spring uh, not sure what you call them. These parts. I'm trying to find where the camera is. It's quite hard to uh, do close-ups on this camera. It's like rubbing your head, rubbing your back in the mirror. Hopefully, that focuses. I don't think it is. This is quite fine. Nonetheless, we'll crack on. Right. Clean up. I hope everyone's doing all right. Um, I know we've been very busy in the club recently. We've just passed 3,500 members, which is a great milestone. Well on our way to 5,000, which is quite a lot when you think about it. Just quit that like that. It's quite fine. It's quite hard to do. I'm going to bother to attempt to file them. Right, so at least two of them. Uh, sorry, I've given the instructions. So I think that taps into that. And that one taps into there. But I don't know which way the detail goes. I think the detail goes facing outwards. Leaf springs, that's what I meant. Thank you, Jed. I knew I was in the right vicinity. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue around the holes. Pretty certain this is the axle. Pretty certain. Which I'm not sure. Looking at the, uh, the length of it. Well, that's not wanting to go. Come on, get in. This might be a case for pliers, not pliers, tweezers. And then number two. Okay, I'm out of time for this. That's quite fiddly. I'm trying to make sure that's straight and level. Maybe just a bit more glue because I was a bit hesitant waiting for that to go off. So hopefully that will hold. So we've got morning Ian from uh, Knutsford. Uh, brilliant. So we've got 80 odd people watching in the chat which is great. If you've got any questions feel free to uh, comment away. Um, I will have the best chance of seeing your comment if you post it on YouTube. What's a certain? I know we post this to certain amounts of uh, certain Facebook pages, but due to their privacy settings, I won't see some of the comments on there, which is unfortunate. 
So if you want to ask me a question, I will definitely see it on YouTube. This is really testing my skills on a Wednesday morning. Coffee hasn't quite kicked in yet. Come on. Right. I think, hopefully, I can't quite show you that. It's quite annoying. That was so fine, you won't focus on the camera. Hopefully, you can see that. So, John's just joined us, and I actually believe, I don't know a story on this, John. Um, I've been left, in, not left in the dark, but I've just not been kept up with the development process on this. But I think John originally designed this kit as a scratch build for himself. I sent it to Justin, and then Justin developed it and turned it into his own kit for us, which I think is brilliant. Um, so, if, if, if that is correct, John, thank you for letting us um, do that. We much appreciate it. Hopefully, we've done it justice. So just look in the chat, we've got uh, Ian, morning Ian, uh, we've got Jason from Barnabas Junction, uh, Steve Barnett, morning Steve, how are you doing? Uh, we've got Trevin Austin, uh, sorry, Trevor Austin, he says, are you a paint before assembly man or afterwards? Um, to be honest, Trevor, with most of the kits I do, I always buy a couple. I sort of buy one and then build one as it is, no paint, no nothing. Um, see how the whole kit goes together, then iron out any imperfections, any, um, you know, find any quirks in the kit that I need to be aware of. And then when I actually come to build one to actually use on my layout or to use somewhere, um, I will then take the completed one and the lessons I've learned from that and then build another one. Um, so after I've built it, if I then decide that it needs this part needs to be painted before it's completed, I will do that. Um, so I normally have two of everything. One to mess up and then one to do properly. <laughs> right. So I've just released um, axle ends, I think they are, the small circular parts that go onto the ends of the wheel. Uh, the hubs, sorry, they're called the hubs. Um, we need to glue them onto the centre, and these are so small, I'm not even going to attempt to use them without these. Oops. So get that in the end. Tiny bit of glue. You have to really be careful with this, because these parts are so small, it's very easy to use too much glue. And if you use too much glue, due to the nature of the materials we use, they will um, swell up and then they will be useless to anyone since they're absorbent. So this is really quite fiddly. Probably not the best kit to do on a live stream because I'm concentrating so much I'm struggling to read the comments and to interact with you guys, but hopefully that is glued kind of into position. That one there. It's not 100% center, but we can live with that. Like I say, I always get multiple kits to have a go at. The first one's always not very good. So I don't mind making mistakes on the first attempt. And hopefully for the second attempt, you learn and you don't make the mistakes. That's always my idea anyway. So we've got morning, uh, morning Tony Astill. Uh, are both these kits available yet? Uh, yes, they are. Um, this one is the LX444. Um, it's on the front page as well. So it's quite easy to find there. Uh, LX444, there you go small horse cart and the other one is a bit of an older kit the um, potato uh, granite or fishing crates and that's alex 24 uh, 214 sorry um hopefully you should be able to find them yep just right just search alex 444 and you should find it or type in um, horse cart or small horse cart and it should be there 
that's one wheel done. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Just double check with the instructions how many we need to do. Uh, it doesn't specify, so I'm going to presume. Into the centre of the wheel, shall we? Uh, I presume we need all four, but it doesn't actually say. It's given us four. In fact, it's given us eight hubs and four wheels. So I'm not sure if that means that's given us, Justin's given us twice the amount of hubs or spares. So I'll leave that for now. I can always come back to that later and we'll do part number four now, which is glue sides G into place, ensuring the more upright ends end of the side sits at the back of the cart, front denoted by arrow on base. And I have <laughs> I have glued the, um, the planking on top of the top, so there's apparently an arrow which shows which way is the front and which way is the back. And I've glued over that, so I don't know which way that is. Oh well, this could go Either way, then. Oh well, we'll live. Right, knife. So these are side pieces. Him, that, this one, and the other. So let me just try and work out if I can which way the front is. I don't think there's any clear indication, apart from a bit of overhang. Hmm. Oh well. Live and learn, eh? Live and learn. Right. So that's a side piece. Uh, if you could do a preview. So Chris is saying if you could do a preview build and find helpful hints, i.e. paint for assembly, uh, could get instructions updated. We could do. And um, only issue with that is and that adds at least a week onto development time. Because then obviously Justin got to produce one that's ready to go and send it up north. Then I've got to get the time to build it and then tell Justin what needs changing if anything and then obviously he'll need to then make those changes and then probably do it again so that will add quite a bit of time onto development of the kits it's not impossible but the instructions aren't hard to follow it's just me <laughs> on a wednesday morning it's not kit error it's user error if i had taken the time to have a look at it a bit better before i would have known what to look out for. But alas, I didn't. For the crackle anyway. Right, so that's the sides on. Nice and simple. Uh, now we need to do the back and front. I think. Whichever one that is. We have three for every cut this time. Looks like we have two backs. We can't work. Yeah, they're the same. So let's get some pliers. No, that's too small. I can't pick this up. I think that way is the back. Quick and dry fit this, dry test. Let's just dry run just to make sure it goes in. Probably not the best thing for you to be watching. But... Yeah, okay. It's me. My fault. The back piece and the front piece look to be the same. I actually think they are the same. Yeah, there we go. 
Okay, I understand that now. That's easy. So the back piece and the front piece are the same, or at least they look to be the same. Um, and on the sprue, they're both at the back. That's not the front piece, at least I don't think. Could be getting that completely wrong. And hopefully once I glue these two on, the rigidity of the kit will increase a lot. Because at the moment it's quite fiddly and um, dainty. Could easily break this if I wanted to. That's one way around. Does appear to be a one end taller than the other, so make sure you're going it the right way around. Hopefully you can see that's the back nicely done. Awesome. And then once this is all together, I will run some glue into the corners just to make sure that everything is um, nicely squared away. I'm not going to come loose. So the next piece, just the front. Isn't wanting to go in. There we go. Hold that for a second. Oop. And the bottom's come off. Oop. And everything's come off. Thought it was fiddly. Okay, so I don't think there's been quite enough glue on this piece, which is the side. The side's just come loose. I just want a bit more glue. Careful not to saturate the kits, because like I say. You can very easily over glue these and they will swell up. So a minimal amount of glue is best. It's always best to sort of go back to it and add more than to add too much in the first place. But once this last piece is on and it's set, it should hopefully pull everything together. He says. Right, that's in there like that. Also, just going to put a tiny blobs of glue into the corners. And then I'll set that go for a second. Just to make sure that it stays as is, it stays put. So I think now we can add the leaf springs and the axle, which that's quite easy and simple. You have four holes in the bottom, and then you've got the uh, two leaf springs on the axle, and they all should just clip in nicely and slot into place. Dead simple. That's really easy. That's well thought out, right? So I'm going to add a blob of glue in the four holes, like so. And then carefully line up the leaf springs. And they just fall into place like that. Simple, really nice and easy. Hopefully you can see that looks a bit like a rocking cart now. So Kev's saying perhaps some helping hands and a magnifying lamp would help. Uh, it would, it would definitely help, but the problem is that's then something else I've got cluttering the desk. You can't see because I've done a quite good job of hiding everything. But this camera has a huge stand that goes all the way down there. I've got another camera to my right, I've got my laptop in the corner with all my tools over to the, to the left. Um, so a magnifying glass or extra lamps would probably actually get in the way rather than um, help out a bit, which is a shame, but yes, it, you, you are right, and that would help out quite a bit normally. So I think now, looking at the instructions. Oh, 
I've got ahead of myself with Mr. Step. I went straight to that step because it looks easy. Only miss this one, which is adding the, uh, the side detail. That's easy enough. That's just a quick job of releasing glue into place. There's one. There's two. That one was missing a node for some reason. That's two. Right. So a simple job. Make sure you got it the right way round. Now the double check is there meant to be any overlap to hide the join from the back piece. Uh, not doesn't say I don't think so. No, they look quite clean. Yeah, they need to clear on flush. So sorry, I just have to explain. Sometimes with these kits, um, you have a back piece and a side piece. Sometimes one of them will be longer to hide the corner, hide the edge. Um, but it looks like on this one that isn't the case. So all I'm going to do is just run a bit of glue around the four edges. This part is quite fiddly. Making sure that's on straight. There we go. Simple as. Dry run the back piece. Yep. So it, I think actually it's a back piece that has the overhang that I was talking about. So just looking into the chat, uh, got a hundred people watching, which is great. Morning. Uh, Morning Nick, morning Kev. Nick saying what make of kit is it? It's a scale model scenery kit. And it is made from a laser board material, uh, which is sort of MDF. And I just dropped it. Um, yeah, it's a nice kit. Goes together quite well. I presume it's going to be one where it will add quite a lot of um, cameo ability, if that makes sense. You could very easily fill this with hay, fill this with barrels, and have a nice little scene out of this one little cart. So going on to the other long side now. Making sure that goes on true and level, which it has. Give that a press down. Go on to the last piece, which is the front. A bit more blue. Bit down the front. And then that's just falling into place. Brilliant. Nice and simple, nice and easy. It's already looking quite nice. So I think next. And so I'm just reading the instructions. Beaching shop, that's the, uh, the funny looking one. <laughs> for lack of a better word, which is this long, almost looks like a Star Wars ship piece that goes around the whole thing. Oops. Try and release that carefully. Got a bit stuck. Once I release it, I'll be able to show you. There we go. This piece. Looks like it might just glues. Right. 
around the carps like so. And it goes down the middle. Like that. So I'm going to do now it's actually dry fitted in place, it's actually quite stiff, it's not really going anywhere. So I'm just going to slightly move it out of the way while it's in place. And then just glue approximately where it's going to go. And push it back into place. Let that go off. And it takes a couple of seconds for this glue to go off. It's quite fast. We do have a couple of bit of working time, which is nice. On the other side, a bit more a bit messy that one. But once you've painted it, the glue dries clear, so um you won't be able to see anything once it's been painted. There you go, that's the, uh, what do they call it? The beaching. Beaching shafts and frame. Brilliant. That's quite, it's all coming together, isn't it? Oh, it's quite nice now. I'm not going to paint it today, by the way. I've um, been doing a lot of painting on these live streams, so I don't want to re be repeating myself. Uh, so now, what we do is add the wheels. Which is just going to be a simple job of adding a small bit of glue to the end of the axles, like so. And then, oops, without breaking it. And that's frayed up on me, which is not what I really wanted to happen. You wouldn't be able to see because it's too, it's not going to be able to focus. Um, but the layers of which the kit um, is made up of, the material has actually frayed up and it's going to be impossible to get it in now. So a bit of improvisation. So if you can keep seeing my hair, I'm just going to cut off carefully, which is quite hard. You can't really press down without the whole thing sort of coming apart. Um, some scissors might be better. I haven't got any. Oh well. I need to cut off the ends of these axles to help the wheels go on. Because Uh, they basically the rather than being like that, it's now like that. Well, it kind of looks like that from the side angle. It's too much glue. Um, like I say, you have to be really careful not to use too much, and there's a bit of a tight fit anyway. It's gonna be quite hard to cut these off there. It's gonna go through. There we go. Might need to require a bit of realignment afterwards. That's fine. And just in case the other one does the same, I'm going to do that. There we go. Um, just need a bit of correction on the frame because that's a bit bent. Hopefully, you can see this. Right, let's give that another go. The wheel might not be on very straight now, but hopefully it's going to be a bit better than it would have been before. I'm going to hold that in place, just while the glue goes off. With the smaller parts like this, it could take a little bit longer just to bite. This might not be the strongest cart in the world now because that's only held on by glue rather than soft and tab construction. But hopefully, <laughs> he says knocking the wheel off, if you don't touch it, it should 
be fine. If no one might have to do a bit of kit bashing to get this to go. That's all part of the process. That's all part of the fun. It's annoying when it decides to glue to your finger rather than the object. What I might do that might be a bit naughty is the uh, what's it called? Oh, the beaching shaft, the long, the long thing that we glued over it. There's not much clearance between the wheel and the beaching shaft. So what I might do is just press it in a bit, angle the wheel in a bit, and actually glue it to the side of the beaching shaft. The wheels don't turn anyway because the axle's square. Um, so that might be a solution to just to give it a bit more rigidity. But that, as long as I don't touch it, should stay. Uh, Tom's saying that if you dry fit the wheels, they just drop on, and you can put a bit of glue on afterwards. The, yeah, that might have been best. But we'll press on. That's what I mean. I always sort of get two of, of everything with kits. So I can look up the first one and then do the second one properly. Um, but with this, we just sort of coax that into place. And don't touch it while the glue goes up. If we can make it sure it goes straight. Hold that for a second. Hopefully. We now have a cart. Quite a simple kit. It's taken us, what, 37 minutes to build? And I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, but to the gentleman who asked, uh, do you paint this before or after? I would probably recommend um, building the kit up until the point of the wheels, then painting everything. Oh, I don't dare put it down. <laughs> I don't dare put it down in case the wheels come off. Um, yeah, if you try and paint it now, you might be a bit too heavy handed and that could mean um, the wheels come off. So I would recommend painting the wheels and the cart separately and then gluing them together. Um, but hopefully I can put this down without it disintegrating. Awesome. That's all, that's all you should need for a Cameo Farmyard piece that isn't in service. Brilliant. That's a nice little farm cart done. Like I say, simple kit. Take your time, read the instructions thoroughly first, and all should go well. And just maybe, um, like Tom said, dry fit the wheels, don't glue them. Oh, sorry, dry fit them first to make sure they're in, pl in place and not over the axle, and then glue them down. So, I think we'll call that one done. And we'll move on to our next kit, which hopefully should be slightly easier. Less taxing, less tedious one, which is just a simple potato crates, which is LX214. Not sure how many you get in the box, you get four in the pack, and they look to be simple fold up and do some detail on construction. Yeah, I think as you can see there, that's quite a simple way of doing it. So let's jump straight in. Let's release one crate. I'm only going to do one. Four nodes, one on each end. There we go. Now since this is the exterior and the final piece, I'm just gonna like we always do. Let's just take the burr off the end. This, if you can see that, but this is a mucky kit and I'm already covered in soot, which is just a waste product from the um, manufacturing process. Um, that can be cleaned off quite easily. Um, but since it's on the inside, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. It doesn't always happen with every kit, it just means that the, uh, the laser cutters need cleaning. It smells quite nicer, which is always a bonus. So, read it that way up. Um, we need some of these 
M looking pieces, uh, which are held in by a node in the middle. There's one. And there's two. So they need to be glued that way. Nice and simple. Just a bit of glue down one end. And then a tiny bit in the middle-ish. That should be enough. Make sure it's all smooth at the bottom. Sorted. That's one done. Turn it around. Now we go to the next. In fact, I'm not turning it around. I'll do it the way the instructions show, otherwise I'll be, I'll do it backwards. That way. Jason from Barnum is saying he loves the smell of laser cut kits. I know I do too. Although my uh, mother-in-law thinks it smells like um, cigars or something like that. So a bit too much glue on that. Glue's just um, splodged out of the corners, but that's not an issue. It dries very clear, hard to tell, and easily avoidable with um, weathering and the like. Uh, sorry, yeah, I won't even. So once that's glued on, uh, da -da -da. So the instructions turn quite over and score gently along the. Okay, so it glues that way in. That's the inside. Okay. Okay, right. Is it? Double check. Yes, that's the inside of the kit. So just lightly score with a knife. Might be useful to whip out the old trusty jig for this. Make sure we fold it correctly to 90 degrees. There it is. Old handy SX002. Don't leave home without it. That's that one. So the end pieces fold inwards. So the end pieces, detail parts just glued on. They all fold in. I do love these SX002s. Someone, I uh, can't remember the name, so apologize if you're watching, um, posting in our top tips in the Railway Modelers Club that if you just um, put a piece of tin foil or something, over these, they last for a long, long time. So then obviously you just replace the tinfoil and you don't get anything on the kit, on the uh, jig, sorry. So they look like that just needs slight scoring just to make sure it goes properly. So this is on the exterior of the kit. I'm just scoring away the little um, nodes that hold the piece together just so they fold a bit nicely or a bit nicer even just before they were just pulling the material up quite springy this it really doesn't want to go That one is being a pain. Doesn't matter if you glue it, if you cut it off, so you can always glue it back on. I think it'll be easier to glue it on afterwards, if that makes sense. But it's still probably best not to. Yeah. Hopefully that should be hidden. It's right time to finish. It's not just you, Ian Bennett, who's um, 
sniffs the bags when they get them. <laughs> they do smell quite nice, new kits. So just a bead of glue on the inside. Fold that up, let the glue go off. Imagine once all this is um, starting to come together, the whole kit will just fall into place and sort of hold itself. He says optimistically. In fact, it might be easier to sort of do all four as one go and just hold it rather than edge at a time. I'll let you know how that gets on. Hold everything in place. Doesn't really matter if these aren't perfect because I can assure you I can see probably about a thousand out of my bedroom window of these. I can assure you they're not all um, smooth, level, even, neat. They're all really messy used and abused so don't feel bad if yours don't look amazing hold that together nicely give it one last press Oop, that part's just not quite gone probably requires a tiny bit more glue another couple seconds just to go off Not quite wanting to go, just one corner, won't quite go. Give it a more persuasive hold. That is strange, why is it not wanting to go? Plastic bands, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, fortunately I haven't got one. <laughs> so I'll use my um, fingers instead. I'm not quite wanting to go yet. I think it's because the material's a bit springy. I think. I'm just probably making excuses now. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's gone again. Tiny bit of glue in the top corner just to hold it. Hopefully, that should. Come on, not wanting to go. This glue only takes a couple of seconds to go off, so it's got no reason to stay on. Very sure it's not inside out. Well, I thought that, but the instructions quite clearly. I've done it the way the instructions have shown. But to be fair, it might be easier to do it the other way around. Which is strange. If you ask me. I've done it the right way. I'm pretty certain I've followed. Yeah. So you glue them onto the X area by the looks of it. As you can see there. And fold it in. Where is it? I know what, I'm going to do it the other way quickly. So we can have a look. And compare. Let me take a quick job. Well that makes sense to me. Unless Coffee's just not kicked in yet. So I'll quickly do this. There's one. So let's try it. So I did it that way. We'll do it this way. See how that goes. I 
thought. Maybe I'm just being daft. But I swear I was doing it the right way around, but maybe not. Oh well. Live and learn. I make mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> Martin said have a look out the window. Yeah. And there are planks on the inside. There are these um, M brackets, whatever you want to call them, on the inside. So maybe I did do it the right way around. I think I was being daft. I think. I think I did it one way around the first time. Which would make sense. So it's not the first time I've done something backwards. Well, that's already looking much better. I'll hopefully show you in a second. That's already gone together. Much nicer. <laughs> Always, as you can tell, that's the one I did first. It's not quite there. It's a bit bowed at the bottom. And that's the one I did this time around. Much neater, much nicer. Don't be uh, fooled by the instructions, I think. They can be, they are correct. The instructions are correct, just how you interpret them. I thought I was doing it right, but obviously not. Anyway, this is how you learn. I make the mistakes so you don't have to, but at least we've recovered and we're back on track. Uh, so now we need the Z brackets. Uh, which, so if you keep seeing my head, held in by two nodes, one on each point. Nearly went away to the carpet monster. So it looks like we just, yeah, we just slot in. So a bead of glue on the inside, each end. Oops, sticking to my fingers. Push that in, so I can't see. There we go, nice and simple. This is why you get four in a pack. So hopefully by a fourth one, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Number two, push that in. Hopefully, you can see that. Dead easy, dead simple. And now, need the three lines. Uh, which ones? So, the shorter three first, shorter three go along the width and then the long three go along the length and that gives it the um I don't know what you'd call it the trestledness needed for forklift trucks so you have the well, i'll probably either just show you so the forklift truck can come and pick them up i'm not sure what you'd call that though make sure that's nice and level And number two. The so sign saying is just Google bar potato crates images and the ang and the angle bars on the inside, making which makes them easier to stack. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to somehow look out the window because I can see them from here. Yeah, that is correct. They are all yeah. The bars on the inside. I'll try and send you a photo of what I can see later. Um, I'll probably post it in the group in the Railway Modelers Club 
just to prove. So the three horizontals, that one's not really straight, but they get beaten up to no end, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. And then just here, the long ones again. And these just go over the top. Just makes it easier for forklift trucks to pick them up. We can hold that in place. And number two. Nearly there. Then one in the middle for good luck. And there we have it. One and a half potato crates. <laughs> well, this one, this is one we learned all our mistakes on, and this is one we did properly. But that only took a couple of minutes once you know how to do it. You can bash those out quite quickly. Although, if you're doing a large farm, you might need quite a, quite a number of these packs. And hopefully our cart has dried a bit, so it's a bit more rigid now. Although, I'm not going to take any chances with it. So there we have it. Two nice farmyard kits in just under an hour. That's not bad going. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And Took some lessons away from it. I know I certainly did. The horse cart is a nice kit, but it's a bit fiddly. So just take your time with it. Just uh, make sure you know what you're doing before you have a go. And thoroughly read the instructions before you start. And the potato crates. Don't forget the exterior goes on the exterior. It sounds really daft, but the exterior goes on the exterior rather than the interior, like I thought here. Make sure you do that the right, right, right way around, tongue twister. Awesome. I hope you, hopefully you enjoyed that. I will try and post some photos of the um, potato farm I can see out the uh, bedroom window in the Rower Modelers Club. Um, yeah, nice and simple. Nice and simple kits, relatively quick and easy to build. And um, lots of potential for filling these up, painting them, weathering them, and making them your own, making a nice little scene on your layouts. Don't think these were ever really put onto trains. Um, could be wrong, but I know these are definitely seen on lorries, especially tractor pulled lorries. Um, so it'd be great to get a couple of those just to detail up some of the vehicles and some of the yards, farm yards. Brilliant. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, I'll be sticking around for a bit on the Road Modelers Club. As you know, I'm always available to speak to there. Got any questions or anything? Um, yeah, that's quite a nice build for Wednesday morning. So thank you for watching, everyone. Hope everyone enjoyed that. And I will speak to you all later. Have a good week. Bye now.